welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at not one but two single board computers, the Odroid HC1 and the Odroid HC2, which have been supplied to review by my friends at Hardkernel. Now, these are both headless single board computers, they're intended for building a NAS or a server or something like that, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the uh, Odroid HC1 or Odroid Home Cloud one to give it its full name, which is sold by Hardkernel for $49. And before we open this up, I thought the best way to explain what's going on here is to go back to this, which is the uh, Odroid XU4 single board computer I showed you uh, about a, a few months back. And the reason I'm showing you this is that the Odroid XU4 is a very nice board potentially for building a NAS from, because this board is very fast, it's based on an octa-core processor, a couple of gigabytes of RAM, it's got a gigabit Ethernet, and it's also got a couple of USB 3 ports. And so what Hardkernel, the makers of this board, have done, they said, if we wanted to bake a board specifically for turning this into a NAS or some sort of server, why don't we make a board like this, but we'll take off things like the HDMI socket, you don't really need that on a server or a NAS, we'll take off a couple of USB ports, we'll take off GPIO, but we'll add on a full SATA interface. So you've got the ability to plug in a standard 2.5 inch SATA drive, an SSD or a hard drive with power and the interface. And we'll also mount it all in such a way the drive will actually mount on the single board computer, all nicely cooled and, and set up. So that's what you basically get in the Odroid HC1. So having told you all that, we'll open it up. Hopefully it'll all make sense now. And in here we have, oh, there's some screws. I know what they're for. We'll have a look at those in a second. And uh, oh, it's in uh, this sort of stuff. Oh, very different to, uh, how does this open? It opens here, look, there we are. And um, it, it doesn't look like any other single board computer, does it? It looks like it has been opened, this one. That's all right, so let's get inside. Crinkle, crinkle. Come on, come on, there it is. And uh, there, as you can see, a very different looking single board computer. There is the board itself. That's the equivalent to what's left from uh, an Odroid, Odroid XU4 on this board. And you can see the mount that mounts everything up. The SATA interface is clearly sitting there. We talk about the specs of the board, the system on the chip here is the same as on the Odroid XU4. In other words, it's a Samsung Exynos 5422 in a little big configuration. And that's because this is an octa-core CPU on this board with four ARM Cortex-A15 cores at two gigahertz and four ARM Cortex-A7 cores at 1.4 gigahertz. This is a powerful single board computer. And you can't see the system on the chip here because it's on the underside of the board in contact with this great big piece of metal to act as a heatsink. If I give you an end angle, you can perhaps see that there. And the whole thing is held onto the heatsink by these push pin type connectors as you often get on heatsinks on, on computer motherboards. I'm not gonna take all this apart and disturb the thermal paste. I'm, I'm sure you'll trust me that the system on the chip is under this board. In terms of other specifications, we've got two gigabytes of DDR3. RAM, we've got a gigabit Ethernet socket, we've got one USB 2 port just in case we need it. We've got a barrel jack for power, this is 5 volts with a 2.1 millimeter internal diameter, 5.5 millimeter external diameter, good solid connector for power. And next to that, we've got a UHS-1 compatible SD card slot for the operating system on the board, which could be something like Open Media Vault, that I'll try out later, but it could be all sorts of other server or NAS-based applications, like WordPress, for example, will run on this board. And then finally, just to show you the other end, we've got our SATA connectors, SATA power and data in one connectors. You find them on, the, on many things these days, very good for mounting a drive nice and securely. And we've also got here a real time clock battery connector and a serial console port in case you need that. So there we are, that's the hardware of the Odroid HC1. And I'm sure you don't need me to tell you it's very easy to fit a two and a half inch drive. So take a hard drive, slot it in like that interfaces to the, the SATA connector, and that you also, of course, get a heatsink for the drive from the, the metal here. It's a very, very good design. Uh, I'm not gonna use a hard drive here, I probably will in the future. I'll probably leave this drive, in fact, in here to use as a NAS myself. But for now, I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna fit instead an SSD. Why? Because I've used this Samsung SSD, this is a Samsung, uh, what, a 850 Pro, in some previous NAS builds and some tests. I wanna make sure I can do some comparable tests. I don't use the same drive, there'll be anarchy in the the comments section later today. So I'll put that in there. 
And uh, you might be thinking, that's uh, not absolutely uh, held in. Do not fear. You might remember earlier, we had a packet with some screws in. And uh, if you turn this thing over like this, there is, if you can just about see this, a screw hole down there, and you can take a screwdriver. This is a tiny, wheel little screwdriver with that screw on. Hopefully get that in there. Uh, well, it's going in far too easily. There we are. And uh, there we are. We've now got our drive nice and securely mounted on this board. So other than that, all you need to make your NAS or your server, whatever else you're going to build with this, is you need a micro SD card with an operating system on it. There's a micro SD card, nicer eight gigabyte cards, kindly provided by Hard Kernel. And of course you need a power supply. Here is the power supply that you can get from Hard Kernel, but you can use any power supply, the right, right rating and the right, obviously, um, plug on the end. Now, fun thing to say is that these are stackable, so you could put multiple one of these in a little stack, you could build up your own little server farm using HC1s. And you also might be thinking, there isn't a top on it. Well, we're used to that with single board computers, but here, Hard Kernel do actually sell this, which is a little bag. Uh, I can't remember how much this is priced up, but I'm sure it'll be appearing on a label on the screen. Oh, there it is, look, you can see the exact price there. This is two pieces of uh, plastic, and these go on top of the board. Now, of course, they go on top of the board very easily once you're used to doing it. So I'll do this in fast motion because it'll take me forever. And uh, there we are. It's now on the top. It didn't take me any time at all. As always these things, it's easy when you know how. And that leaves you, uh, oh, it hasn't clicked. There we are, it's clicked up properly now. And as you can see, the end is all nicely uh, fastened there. And you've even got uh, access for, uh, well, obviously you need it for your ethernet port and, and your power. You can even get at the micro SD card. So there we are, all ready to go by having an operating system on its uh, micro SD card is the Odroid HC1. And you're probably thinking, therefore, because you're now going to put that operating system on, I'm not. I've got something else to show you before we do that. Now, having off screen got this cover absolutely clicked into place on the Odroid HC1, I thought I'd deal with a question some of you may have, which is, that's all very well, Chris, very nice and neat device, but what if I want to fit a three and a half inch drive on the board? Well, there is an answer to that, and it's called the Odroid, wait for it, HC2. Exactly the same as what I've just showed you, except it's bigger. You can fit a three and a half inch drive. So not a lot to add in terms of the uh, specs here. We've got screws again, and uh, we'll get this thing out of the, the box. There we are. Oh, so many things here on the table today. You wouldn't believe the, uh, the chaos and the excitement. There we are. And uh, once again, it's been opened. This is a very large Russell. Russell, come out, come out, come out wherever you are. There we are. Onto the floor, dearie me. Um, this is the largest single board computer I've ever seen, except of course, it's a small single board computer as we just saw, but you can fit on here your three and a half inch drive. This thing costs the Home Cloud two uh, $54 from Hard Kernel, a bit more from other retailers once you've added in the currency conversions and the taxes and postage and things, but still good value thing, I think. And uh, you can take a hard drive up to 12 terabytes. Here I've got a, a what, one and a half terabyte drive. This is an old Western Digital uh, um, green drive, which presumably would just click in there. It would very nicely. That works rather well, doesn't it? And I presume again, there is the screw holes. Yes, we've got several screw holes here, so I'll just uh, attend to those. And uh, there we are, that's nice and uh, secure. Yes, you missed the entry onto the screen and missed the screwdriver, never mind. And uh, there's also here, of course, a cover as well, if I've got it over here. Yes, there's a cover to, uh, to fit on top. And uh, while I get that out, I should actually also tell you the other difference on this board is it needs a 12 volt power supply because you can't power a three and a half inch drive with five volts. So there's a different power supply, which is here. Same type of barrel jack, but different voltage. Always be careful to get the right voltage going into your single board computer, or you could have a very sad time. Anyway, I'll just put the top on this. There we are, much easier to fit than the other one for some reason. And we have our Odroid HC2 potential NAS, or actual NAS, it could be depending on what we install on it. And of course, still the Odroid HC1. So I'm now going to boot up uh, which one? I'm going to boot up, I think, this one, the Odroid HC1, and we can test out its performance. Right. I've now got the Odroid HC1 up and running, as you can see, connected to uh, Ethernet and power with the SD card in. 
And on that SD card, we have an image of Open Media Vault, which I obtained by going to the Open Media Vault website, going to the section for Odroid images, which sent me through to SourceForge, as you can see here. And the latest version, at least in April 2018, which I needed to use was OMV3092. So I downloaded that and used Etcher to write it to the micro SD card, which you can now see in the uh, HC1. And I'd also point out, I've got the top off so you can see clearly, there are three LEDs on this board. It's running headlessly with no monitor, but you can see roughly that the thing is okay because there is a power LED, a sort of red LED down, down here. There is a uh, little green LED which shows disk activity. None of that right now, the thing is, is, is going on that way. But we've also got this little uh, blue LED which is flashing away, just a little heartbeat there to show us the board is alive. Anyway, we can see we've clearly got the hardware working okay, the image installed of Open Media Vault. It's now time to set that up. And I'm now going to do that in Windows using a web browser. So, here I am in Windows, and I'm going to access Open Media Vault on the HC1 and set it up. And to do that, I need to enter into my web browser the IP address of the HC1. And to get that, you can't plug a monitor into the HC1 and have a look because it hasn't got a connection for a monitor. You could potentially go into your router or your, your router, depending on how you want to pronounce it, look at its control panel, find the address there, or you could use a piece of software. And that's what I've done here. I've used a piece of software called Angry IP Scanner, which you can download from this website. This is something I learned about, in fact, from Hard Kernel when setting up the uh, HC1. I haven't used this previously, but it seems rather good. There's various versions available. I've used a very old version where you can simply download an executable and run it, and you don't need to install Java as you do with the other versions. So I've got that down here. If I run up that piece of software, basically it scans between IP addresses and finds devices on the network. So I know this will be somewhere between something like 192.168.1.0, and 192.168.1, maybe say 100, it'll be between roughly maybe probably those ranges. And we'll check in options, make sure we set just to show us live hosts, or we'll have loads of things on the screen. And we'll press start. And there we are, look. Yes, it's found the Odroid XU4, as well as this, this machine here, um, on the network at 192.168.1.8. So that's the address I've entered up here. And it's brought up this login screen where we can put in the default username and password, which is admin and a open media vault. And there we are, should let us in. And uh, here we are. Now, if we are doing this properly, we go in here into general settings and change our uh, password from something to be a bit more um, safe than simply admin and open media vault. But I won't do that for now. I'll do a very quick setup. If you want to see the setup of open media vault in more detail, look at my uh, Rock 64 open media vault. Uh, video. I'm going to do a, a rapid setup here. So we'll just check physical disks are there. There's the SSD we plugged into it, and yes, clearly it exists. And if we look in file systems, because I've used that before on Open Media Vault, now it should be there. And uh, yes, there it is at the bottom there. So we'll highlight it in yellow and we'll mount that drive. And uh, there we are, it's mounted. And like everything else in Open Media Vault, we'll have to keep confirming changes. So I'm going to flick through this rapidly, as I said, and you'll see lots of these confirmations going on. So anyway, we've now got that drive there. So we can now go down to Access Rights Management and to Shared Folders. And we'll add a shared folder. We'll call it, what should we call it? Let's call it a HC1, why not? And um, we'll put it onto that device there. And that'd be fine. We'll press Save on that. We've now got a shared folder. And we now need to actually share that across the network. We'll do a Windows share using SMB CIFS. We'll enable that service with a little slider there. Don't, don't forget that bit. And uh, as usual, save what's going on. Always keep applying these changes. And then we'll go to shares and we'll add a share. Uh, I think we'll uh, use that there. Obviously the one we just set up. And then we'll save that, and we've now got a shared folder. And again, apply our changes. And then finally, we'll go to user, and we'll uh, add a user to the system so that someone can actually access this thing. We'll call it just uh, CJB for me. We'll put in a simple password and uh, save. And once again, apply our changes. And then finally, if we highlight this user, we can uh, set their privileges which will include read-write access to our HC1 shared folder. And with a final set of uh, 
approval of changes, we should have everything set up on our Odroid HC1 NAS. Now, we just want to make sure it works. We will get rid of that, get rid of this as well. Don't need these things anymore. We will go to uh, this PC. We'll go to computer and uh, mapper network drive. And we'll uh, browse around there. And we can see there we are, the Odroid uh, XU4 now exists on the network. And we can see there we are, there's the Odroid XU4. I want to be uh, that and my nice simple test password. We'll remember it, okay. You can say there the HC1 is okay. And we'll map that to drive Z and finish. And there we are, the Odroid HC1 is now available on our network. Everything's working, hurrah. So, here I am back again. I just thought we'd do a speed test. We've got our HC1 on the network there, all nice and empty in its network drive. And I'm going to take a set of files I've used previously, two gigabytes of files um, for a speed test. Many of you have asked me, what are these files? They are uh, video files, as you can see. So they're all pretty large files. This is a test of a reasonable number of large files copying across for this test. So we'll do a copy from there and we'll uh, paste those across. Oh, I can hear a little bird singing outside. You probably can't hear that. Anyway, we'll see how long it takes to copy across on this uh, HC1 with its inbuilt SATA interface, and we can compare the data with the other SBCs I've built NASes with previously. And uh, there we are. It's actually hit 20.0 seconds dead. That's rather spooky, isn't it? But uh, if we take that result and we put it on our table next to the uh, other SBCs I've tested with NAS configurations of Open Media Vault fairly recently, you'll see it just pips the UDO X86 Advanced Plus. But uh, I think really everything here at the top end is being constrained by the speed of a gigabit Ethernet. But as we can see, clearly very good performance from the HC1 being used as an Open Media Vault NAS. As we've just seen, the home cloud single board computers from Hard Kernel can be used to build a very effective NAS. Now, in this video, I've achieved that using Open Media Vault, but the HC1 and the HC2 can run other software, and I may well try that out to build different NAS units or servers in a future video. But now, that's it for this time. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.